Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo on configuring single machine blueprints. In this demo, we'll show you the administrator experience of how to create a single machine blueprint with vCloud Automation Center. First, we'll discuss the two types of users that are able to create single machine blueprints, the tenant admin and the business group admin. Next, we'll demonstrate the steps required in order to configure a new single machine blueprint. These include configuring the blueprint information, build information, properties, and actions. Finally, we'll show you how to publish a blueprint to the catalog so that users can access and request it. In VCAC6, there are two users that are able to create blueprints, the tenant administrator and the business group administrator. The general purpose of the tenant administrator is to create groups, policies, and configurations that will be used by all business groups throughout the tenant. The business group administrator, on the other hand, is to take the business groups that the tenant admin gives to them and create appropriate content for the users they are responsible for. The main difference between these two roles in regards to blueprints is that the tenant admin can create blueprints that are global to the tenant whereas the business group administrator is only able to create blueprints for their business group. vCloud Automation Center has four primary policies used to implement user-centric, business-aware cloud management. The first are business groups. VCAC allows administrators to define multi-level grouping structures and associate users from Active Directory and LDAP with one or more groups that have specific role-based access within those groups. Second, we have resource reservations. Reservations allow administrators to allocate previously discovered virtual, physical, or cloud resources to each of those groups. As part of assigning resources to a group, you can associate costs to those physical resources. Resource reservations can be grouped by service levels as part of reservation process. When users request machines, they'll be charged based on a prorated consumption of those resources. The third is service blueprints. Blueprints define the policies that will control the provisioning and ongoing management of a VCAC compute service from in the initial request through provisioning and ongoing management and decommissioning. This lifecycle management can be unique for every blueprint defined in the system. And the fourth policy is entitlements. Entitlements are new to VCAC 6 and merge the business group and its specified users with services and policies. The value of this new object is that many groups can use the same blueprint while applying their specific group's policies rather than having to create completely new blueprints for each business group. This demo will focus on the third policy type around service blueprints. Blueprints define much more than just how a machine will be deployed. The administrator sets all the policies and controls that will define the full lifecycle management of that resource, from what happens at request time, what a user can do during the ongoing management of the resource, and finally through decommissioning. Each blueprint can be unique per resource, per group, and per user. We'll start by logging in as our tenant administrator, Tony. Once logged in, navigate to the Infrastructure tab, and then click Blueprints, and then Blueprints again. In this screen, you'll be able to see the blueprints currently created and visible to you based on your role. To create a new one, click the New Blueprint button, and then select the platform you'll be provisioning to. In this case, we're provisioning to vSphere, so we'll select Virtual, and then vSphere. When creating blueprints within vCloud Automation Center, you are defining the full lifecycle management of that resource, not just how the resource will be deployed. To simplify the process, the blueprint creation is broken into four tabs. Each tab will guide you through the creation process. The first tab is Blueprint Information. It's used to provide general characteristics about the resource. For our demo, we'll configure a base Windows 2008 R2 blueprint running on our vSphere infrastructure. Let's start to configure the, our blueprint. We'll start with the name and description. 
The name and description fields will be visible to the end users, so it's important to provide clear and descriptive information. Let's fill in our information with the name being Windows 2008 R2 Base and the description being Deploy Windows 2008 R2 Base. From there we come to the master checkbox. To simplify the blueprint creation process, managers can copy an existing blueprint and modify it to their needs. By checking the master box, we will be able to enable this blueprint to be copied. After that comes the display location on request field. If the user is required to select the location or data center for the resource to be deployed, you would select the display location on request checkbox. For our blueprint, we'll only be using policy to determine the placement. Next is the shared blueprint setting. This setting allows you to make it so that the blueprint is accessible across all different business groups. By unchecking it, you have the ability to select specific business groups that are able to access this blueprint. We'll go ahead and leave it as a shared blueprint. Reservation policies can be used to enforce SLA and placement of our resource. Since we intend to have our virtual machine deployed on our vSphere infrastructure, we'll select the vSphere specific reservation policy. This will enforce all machines deployed using this blueprint to be built on the intended infrastructure. The next configuration is the prefix. Pre the prefix determines the naming convention used for each machine deployed in this blueprint. Since we have already defined the group naming convention, we can leave the default option here. Note that it is possible though to override the default option. The next configuration is the max number per user. This field can be used to restrict the number of resources an end user can request based on this blueprint. We will not enforce this limit. After that is the archive field. Very often when a resource is end of life, there may be an archive period required for compliance reasons prior to the resource being deleted. We will define a 30 day archive period for our blueprint. The last field here is the cost field. vCloud Automation Center provides two mechanisms for determining resource cost. This cost property within the blueprint can be used to define a fixed cost per day for this blueprint. This cost can be associated with the software or operational costs of providing the service. The solution also allows administrators to assign costs to the infrastructure, so depending on where the resource is deployed will determine the actual cost to the end user or group. We'll assign a fixed cost of 50 cents a day. Let's move on to the next tab in configuring our blueprint. The build information tab will allow us to specify how the machine will be deployed and what build parameters will be presented to the requester. As we select the different options presented to us, the web page will reload based on the previous selections. The intent is to simplify the process by only presenting options based on your platform and build needs. Let's walk through the process. Our blueprint will utilize cloning on the vSphere platform. Our first field is a blueprint type. Blueprint type is where you specify if this is a server or a desktop request. We'll select server. The next field is action. The action describes the type of provisioning that will be performed. We will choose clone for our example. Next is the provisioning workflow. Based on the platform type, blueprint type, and action, you'll be presented with one or more available provisioning workflows. Refer to the operations guide for more detail if you're unsure which workflow is required for your needs. After that comes the clone from. Because we have selected cloning, we must then choose the vSphere template to clone from. Note that these have been discovered during the data collection process. Finally in this list is the customization spec. To further customize the machine, you may specify the customization specification if one is available within vCenter. Here we'll type Windows 2008 R2 spec. Next we have the machine resource header. In virtual blueprints, the memory, CPU count, and storage specifications determine the resources allocated to the virtual machine. If you supply a maximum, the machine requester can only increase the specification up to that limit. After that we have the lease length. The lease of the machine's lease, the time until it expires, can be specified in days. 
A blank lease setting means that there's no expiration date. Still further down this page is the volumes header. Under volume, you may specify additional storage volumes that will be presented in the OS. By default, the OS volume in the template is configured. The admin can also specify the max number of volumes and networks that can be configured per machine. The next tab is the Properties tab, where administrators can select predefined custom properties, called Build Profiles, or define new custom properties for this resource. Like any system or network object, a machine is defined by a number of properties. Examples include the machine's architecture and operating system, along with the size of its memory and disks. Some properties are reserved by vCloud Automation Center, with a full list available at, in the Operations Guide. Other custom properties can be created and specified by the administrator. All custom properties are available throughout the lifecycle of this resource. We'll select the build profile called Windows 2008 R2, which contains a VCAC reserved property called VMware.VirtualCenter.OperatingSystem with the value of Windows 7 Server 64 Guest. On the next tab, the Actions tab, we're able to enable actions for this blueprint. However, in VCAC 6, this alone no longer provides users access to these actions. Actions need to also be combined with service entitlements. It's the combination of the actions specified in the blueprint and the service entitlements that determine what actions each user can perform on the machines they own. Check out the video on service entitlements for additional details. At this point, we have completed the configuration of our single machine blueprint. To save the settings, select OK. Finally, once the blueprint has been created and saved, we must publish it to the catalog so it can be entitled. This is a new step to VCAC 6. The purpose of that published step is twofold. First, it allows a person of another role, a business group manager for example, to take over the next steps in the catalog, freeing up the infrastructure as a service architect. Second, by publishing the blueprint to a catalog and having the policies defined at the catalog level, it allows us to reuse the same blueprint over and over again for different groups that require different policies. For more information on altering a catalog item and entitling it, please refer to the catalog management video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.